Oh Father, we thank you. For in your presence is the fullness of joy and at your right hands the pleasures forevermore. No one can bless like you. No one can raise like you. None can do the things that you do. And it's only in your presence that there is a fullness of joy and at your right hands are pleasures forevermore. Thank you for affording us this atmosphere on the ticket of the blood of Christ. We're least deserving of what you've done in our lives. For the things you're set to do, the greater glory you're bringing us into. We are aligned to your will and to your counsel. Have your way. Do with us as you please tonight. Spirit of the living God, we are all yours. In Jesus' name. And amen. Come on, celebrate the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 You might please be seated. Let's celebrate those who are streaming online. Thank you for being able to sign on at this time. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's going to be a great time in Jesus' name. I, I was wondering where I was when the choir, what do you call the choir? Some choirs just have name. This one is the name. It's the, it's the name. It's, it's the name. The last time I came, I thought they were good, but now they are better. <laughs> This guy is a bad guy. This guy, this guy is a bad guy. This guy. God forgive you. <laughs> Celebrate new wine. Uh, uh, you, you know the meaning of your name and you are living out your name. Amen. As, as a leader in the, in the house on the rock, uh, I have the privilege of traveling far and wide, where I get across churches under the house on the rock and uh, other churches as well. And one of the things you want to find out when you get into an atmosphere is its level of depth. This church is deep. It's this one. Now you need to clap for yourself. It's deep. I I'm just trying to grasp uh, your value systems, how, what you promote the most, and the believers you're raising are not believers of today. They are believers for the future. And no matter the weight of glory that comes on them in the coming years, they will not buckle. They will not buckle. What is happening here is, is phenomenal. So help me celebrate my brother and my friend for doing such a great work. Doing such a great work, doing such a great work. And I'm proud to say he's my brother and my friend and my confidant. Hallelujah. Okay, let's get to the word of God tonight. Romans chapter 8. And those of you following online is Romans chapter 8. And when you find it, please do stand. I will ask you to please stand as we read God's word. We stand before kings and leaders and people who respect this is most appropriate to stand as the word of God is read. From verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and of death. If you followed me from the morning time, I was showing the divergence between the flesh and the spirit. Now we are adding another installment, and it's clear here uh, that the two sides have their laws. So uh, the flesh has its law, and the spirit has its law. For the law, verse 3, could not... For what the law could not do, which is assigned to the natural birth, in that it was weak through the flesh, 
God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. How? Who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal man is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God. Neither can, even if it wanted to. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If it be so that the Spirit of God dwell in you, now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. Verse 11, but if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, if it is that same spirit that dwells in you, he also that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Let us pray. Father, grace your word, grace your servant to speak succinctly, clearly, expressly for the edification and the establishment of this great work. On the present truth we give you the glory in advance because we know you will do exceeding abundantly far above all that we ask think we're emerging for in jesus name we pray and amen you may please be seated in the presence of the lord about six years ago my wife began a study on the god's generals and said she was going to study all the great men whom god had used in several decades and centuries and I took it upon myself to get out all the series that were written by Robert Lyon. And, and as she's reading all those uh, collections of men's lives and testimonies of what God did through them, and she is fascinated by the story when she gets to the subject that deals with uh, the Ami Semple McPherson, who is uh, the founding uh, minister of the Four Square Gospel Church worldwide. And, and the more she's reading about it, she is fascinated how God could use a woman of such great virtue. And while she's doing that, I was we were preparing to travel to America. So I said to her, this time around, when we go, I'm going to take you to Angelus Temple, where you're going to see what you're reading about. And when I get to the U.S., it so happened that that year, uh, the Foursquare International was having their international convention right uh, in, in, in Santa Ana area at the Santa Ana area of Los Angeles. And then, so I changed my schedule so that my visit to Los Angeles would coincide with the international conference. And then we go for this international conference. And then, of course, among the other things they offered was a tour of the Angelus Temple. And that also could go on with the, uh, the uh, international headquarters and a visit to the personage where Ami Semper McPherson actually lived. And we went through that whole experience as it were, and that was going to change my life. And one of the things that struck my heart, which the conference was supposed to be for three days, but I could only attend one day. Not because I was indisposed by virtue of the impact of the conference. What got at me at the conference was they ran a video of pastors who have served for 50 years and then they run another video of those who have served for 40 years and then they said may all these pastors please stand now what God had me was you mean the after 40 years they still come to a convention after 50 years they are still attending. I made up my mind, I'm going to find out something about this ministry. 
But I was going to get the biggest shock of my life when we went to the various places. They were taking us around the place. And I stood on that same altar and they say that, oh, this same altar hasn't changed. I mean, simple McPherson stood here and then she preached to this same place. I'm like, okay. Then from there, they took us to the parsonage. We went through the entire place. And what got to me that inspired what I'm about to speak was the final words from the supervisor of the parsonage. And this is what they do when you've gone around the house and you're about to leave. She comes to declare a benediction on you before you depart. In her words, may the same spirit by which God used this sage of the kingdom he says as you go may that same spirit accomplish in your space what you just experienced i said that to say this as many as you have seen in the kingdom of god however god has used them it is not an inferior spirit that you have I mean, Sir Paul McPherson did ministry in a time in America's history where the women didn't have a right to vote. She was the first to have a radio license. She had too many firsts. And what got to me was she was a woman. Within the same space, you had the likes of John G. Lake. You had the likes of William J. Seymour of the Azusa Street. Azusa Street is in downtown Los Angeles. But today, there is nothing there. Only a few points to tell you that there was a building here. There are no meetings. However, in that conference, this is six years ago, they say that the adherence of the four square had grossed up to two million. My concern is, as at that time, six years ago, Ami Simple McPherson had left the earth for over 73 years. And I'm asking myself, what did she do? What, what was it about this person that 70, 73 years in death, yet the work is growing, the work is making impact around the world. What did she do? What was driving the system? And I'm going to confess to you, when we got to the international headquarters, there's about a 10-story building. I have never in my whole life, in my whole life, ever met believers of such spiritual texture. There was something that exuded from the staff. The way they talked, there was something about their persona. There was something about their spirit. And I begin to ask myself, what was it that this woman encountered that made her what she grew up to become? Child of God, when we talk about that same spirit, you need to begin to see yourself that for as many as as believe on him to them he gave the power to become the sons of god what you got was not inferior what you received was not inferior it's just the way that one person worked his own spirituality more than yours that's why possibly he is what it is but i want to assure you that what you got is not inferior to what somebody else has and that's why in the course of this conference we will have a time to pray we will have a time to call on god that that same spirit if he said if it was that same spirit uh, that rose Christ from the dead there is something about it uh, if it dwells in you uh, it will produce the same results the disciples after the day of Pentecost had began to move the great spirit great move of God of the early church and and of course you know the story how one man was healed who was by the gate called beautiful and of course uh, that miracle was notable because he had been at that place for 40 years and on this particular day the Bible said they came to the temple at the hour of prayer and Peter looks at the man and says silver and gold have I none but such 
as I have, such as I have, such as I have. You can give what you don't have, but Peter knew exactly what he had. He knew what kind of spirit was inside of him. And when he opened his mouth and said, silver and gold have I known, but such as I have, give I unto thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and work. And the Bible says immediately, his ankle bows received strength, and Peter helping up, he leaping up stood, and the Bible says he began to leap and began to praise God. That same spirit. And here it tells us in that Romans chapter 8, but if Christ be in you, if Christ be in you, this is where I started in the morning. If Christ be in you, if it is Christ that is in you, he says here, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is alive because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus, if what is at work in you is what raised up Jesus, he says... Uh, uh, that dwells in you, that raised up Christ of the dead, shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the Spirit of God. What is he saying here? The same capacity, the same strength, the same potency that is in Christ is what you receive. What you receive is not fake. What you receive is authentic. That's why I laid the foundation in the morning about contacting that spirit, about your new birth in Christ. When that Christ comes into you, what you have is not inferior. It's not inferior. Let me move this. So the Bible said the disciples... And of course, that, 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 that singular miracle attracted crowds of people who came around the place. And Peter, of course, made a speech. And following the speech, thousands gave their life to Christ. In chapter 4, and of course, they are, they, the, the, the priests, of course, we are upset about what had happened. Because attention was now being drawn from them to these people that the Bible says they were unlearned and ignorant men. And now they call Peter and says, by what means? Chapter 4, verse 7 of the book of Acts. By what power and by what name have you done this? Just to make it clear, this spirit is not just any kind of spirit. We are talking about the divine spirit of the almighty God. God that dwells in your heart and it didn't get into your heart for fun it got into your heart and it has to produce some undeniable results in your life that's where we're headed that's where we're headed you know when 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 Nicodemus got to Jesus he says no man can do these things except God is with him you see, there are some results that can be denied. There are some results you can contest. But there are some results you, you cannot deny. You cannot. Last month I was in Cameroon. I have a spiritual son there. And he asked me to come. When I get there, I had a meeting three days. And of course, the first day. Did the first day, the next day was a Saturday. And they said they had a morning session for leaders, businessmen, and the likes. And then I go there in the morning, and then I'm done with it. And uh, I'm kind of tired, and so I come and I say, uh, I need to sleep. But when I go to the hotel, he says to me that uh, there's, there's someone that would like to see me. So I said to him, uh, I, I, I think I need to sleep because of the evening session. He says, um, okay, why don't you see the person and then uh, later you pray for the person on, on Monday. And I said to him, I don't pray twice. If I'm going to pray, I'm going to pray now. If I'm not going to pray, then I'm not going to pray at all. So we leave it till Monday. He says, no, that, that they, I have got to pray. And I'm now asking him, I said, what is so special about praying right now? He said, because uh, we have a situation. Uh, the man has come with his wife. Uh, he, needs, he needs to see you. And, the, and I said, okay. And so he persisted. So I said, you know what? Let me just get done with this and move it out of the way. And so they come up to my room, and then the fellow is the permanent secretary to the Ministry of Agriculture there. And so it's a notable condition. His wife has cancer of the breast, category four, and by this time, she was smelling. And, and, I was, I mean, and I'm trying to tell him that, you know what, 
He said she had not slept for seven days. Seven at a stretch. She has not slept for seven days. All right? She hasn't slept for seven days. And there's no painkiller in the world that hasn't been applied. And the pain is unabating because everything had collapsed. She wasn't wearing a dress. Because of her condition, everything was blotted out. And of course, she was wearing a veil. And because of how painful it was, she took off the veil. And you could see pores everywhere. And, and, and she's, she's speaking to me. I hear the Spirit of God say to me, uh, I should give her the handkerchief I used uh, in the morning session. And I said, well, I don't know, sir, but uh, this is what I'm going to do. Uh, this is my handkerchief. I use it in the morning. Uh, you take it when you go back home. You put it where the cancer is. And the moment they leave the place, the report was that she didn't need as much as wait to get home. Took off her dress and took the handkerchief, placed it on her brow and pushed, wore it with her bra and the breast together. And slept off. What she hadn't done in seven days. By the next morning, the lump had gotten soft. By Monday, the doctors were confused. When the news reached the minister of Agric, he sent for me. Because he knows the condition. Friends know about it. Everybody around knows the condition. But it is completely healed. From the crown of eye, completely, completely healed. Listen. He said, if it is that spirit that is in you, if it is that spirit, so we have to interrogate what kind of spirit did you receive? Because if it is that same spirit, and, and, and it doesn't have a counterfeit, either it is that spirit or it is not that spirit. There is no middle ground. There is no middle ground. And when you are going to have a quest, many times after every session I've noticed, they ask you to pray. I would like you to open your heart and pray with expectation. Because the Bible says, if it is that same spirit that raised up Christ, except you, what you believe in your heart is not genuine. But if the salvation that is in your heart is genuine, that same power, it can quicken, it can move, it can revive. That same power it is unparalleled on the earth there is no other thing that comes close to it that same spirit and what are we saying to you in this conference it is that same spirit it is that same spirit. 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 And it's a powerful spirit. It's not a normal spirit. It's, an, it's the spirit of the living God. How can you imagine that same spirit that created the entire earth? It dwells inside of you and your life can be normal. It just can be. Because if it is that same spirit, things have got to be different. Or it's got to be different. It's going to be different. It's going to be different. Listen, the essence of every conference is not the speech, but it's purely equipment. That's the reason for it. That's why we go to the entire land to bring different kinds of giftings and graces uh, so that we get to equip for the work of the ministry. And your, the, the equipment you need, uh, this is the most potent of all, the spirit of the living God. First Corinthians chapter 4 verse 20. For the kingdom of God is not in word but in power. Or it will take power. I said it will take power. Some things will not happen. It will take power. Some things will not move. It will take power. It will take power to bring change in our world. It will bring power to bring change in our space. It will take power. And it is that same space. Spirit. It's not another one. 
The kingdom of God is not words. And, and in the course of this conference, we are going to pray. In the course of this conference, we are going to declare. In the course of this conference, so we are not just teaching. The Bible said the things that Jesus Christ began to do and to teach. So when you teach, you do. When you do, you teach. And before it is over, we will experience the tangible manifest power of God. Because it is that same spirit. That same spirit. Now I know there are people that don't believe. Let them keep their unbelief. Let them keep their unbelief. Let them keep their unbelief. But when you have encountered that spirit, that, that it does something in your life. There is no way the divine life of God infuses with your life and things remain the same. It's impossible. The kingdom of God is not in word. And no matter what you say, until power is demonstrated, people don't have chance to believe. In that same meeting, someone came. A pastor comes to me and tells me, he's a pastor in the city. And then, while he came with his wife. And he's telling me about a hard time they have been having. And while he's speaking to me, God said to me, get up, take up one of your shirts from the, from, from your, the wardrobe and give the man to wear. And I gave him and he left. By the time I returned back to Nigeria and they tell me that everything about the man's life began to turn around. By the day, every day was something different. Everything began to change. Don't tell me that spirit is not good. Don't tell me that spirit is not powerful. Listen, of what use is to put words with you and then you can't put it to use. What use? We can exegete the spirit, the new man of God, the spirit of God, but the essence is not just that you understand it, but to embrace it and then exercise what you got. John chapter 6 verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profits nothing. John chapter 6 verse 63. It is the spirit that quickens. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. This spirit has no tribe. It has no gender. It doesn't know qualification. It's got none of those things. It says, it says the spirit quicken it. The flesh, that is in the flesh. It profits nothing. The, it is the spirit that makes the difference. I'm not saying don't go to school. Yes, school is good. I don't mean don't make ever make all the effort. But I want to say to you, there is an extent to which the flesh and all his attainment can get you, which is what we read in the morning. That the Bible says that of all men born of women, there is none that has reason greater than John the Baptist. That is the highest. He said, but he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. Which means uh, you possess a grace you possess a spirit you possess a power by it you can attain to just any goal in life that people of the natural strength cannot they can't they can't i'm a simple person fed two million people in america's greatest depression and built that facility the angelus temple in america's depression was it about being a man or woman? It's got nothing to do with that. It's by the Spirit. It's by the Spirit. This conference is to steer you up, to awaken your consciousness, to crave like you crave for your biggest meal, to crave like you have your crave for your, for your ice cream and all those things you have a craving for. Have a serious craving uh, because this spirit, uh, if you don't grab the whole picture, you don't either receive it or you don't maximize what you got. The spirit it is the spirit that quickens. You see this whole thing called church? It's spirit. The real power behind us is spirit. That's why the people of the world cannot understand. 
The Bible said the natural man cannot receive the things of the spirit, neither can he understand it because they are what? Spiritually discerned. Our driving power is not natural. That's what they said. That these disciples were unlearned and ignorant men. They were a bunch of fishermen. But when that spirit came upon them on the day of Pentecost, everything changed. Everything changed. Everything changed. And I had to, by the time I'm done, in Cameroon, you've got to be careful when you move around. They had to send an official vehicle from the Ministry of Agri to carry me back to the airport. Listen, the redeemed Christian church of God could not have grown the way it grew without signs and wonders. How, how, how you, our father in the faith does not preach like this. So power is not about the gyration. Are you getting it? Power is power. And he will just like his gisting. Uh, my father say, like just like that. But he had contacted something. And the result is phenomenal. It is that same spirit. It. It's not a different Christ he has from what you got. And if what he had can produce that, it should motivate you to start to have faith in what is in you. That what is in you is greater than what is in the world. That if he can work that much, he can work this much with my life. If I give two of you, you know, there is something that happens with these devices we have, and it happens in your house. You have the phone, but your kids can operate it more than you. It's the same phone. And somebody has a better knowledge of how to operate it than the other. It's the same thing. Did Jesus Christ give the parable the last time I was here? I preached. Oh no, he was here. I think you're the venue. About the talents. Same talents. Same market value, same talents. The Bible said the man was going to a far country to receive a kingdom and to return. And he calls his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds, which means every servant had one pound each. He travels, he returns, and begins to take account of the servants. And the Bible says, one man comes and says, Lord, thy single pound has gained ten pounds. The other guy comes and says, thy single pound had gained five. And the last guy comes and says, I know who you are. You are a hard man. You are austere. You pick where you didn't put down. You reap where you didn't sow. Hear what the Bible says. He says, out of your own mind, I'm going to judge you. Hear me, child of God. The economy was the same. The hard man was the same. Under the same hard man, he produced results. And then the results were not alike. Which means that the, the, the pound had the same market value, but it is the impute of the individual to what they got that brought about the difference of result. So if your neighbor hears what I am saying and puts more to his talent, he's going to get more result. Not because your talent is fake. Your talent is not fake. It's what you decide to do with what you heard. That's why he said in the book of Hebrews uh, that the gospel preached to us uh, was the same that was preached to them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed in faith to them that heard it. There's nothing wrong with what you got. As we are laying foundation, we have to start setting this thing up. Because somebody's life is about to change. Oh, I said somebody's life is about to change. And we are not going to change it by enemies, but by the raw power of that same spirit. Somebody's going to get healed. Somebody's going to get delivered. Somebody's life's going to turn around. And there's no other means by which. There are people going through issues. Listen, everybody's looking for good news. Now, because for, the good news is not exactly the same with people. Somebody who is thirsty, what is good news? Water. Someone who is hungry, what is his good news? Exactly. Somebody who is not educated, what is his, what is his good news? And people are looking for the good news. And from that same spirit, it can address just any need of human. Paul 
Paul comes and he says, my speech and my preaching, which is our ultimate assignment. The preaching, he said, my speech and my preaching. Why did God give the spirit? Why did he endow you with the Holy Spirit? It's not for fun. It's not just because you can speak in tongues. That's good. It's okay. It's nothing bad. But is that all? No, sir. My speech and my preaching. My speech. The Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be what? Saved. He said, but how can they call on whom they have not heard? How can they hear without a preacher? How can they preach except they be sent? Real preaching that brings succor, that brings salvation, is one that comes from the place of power. That's what he said in Romans chapter 10. He says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Then he goes for that to say, how can they call on whom they have not heard? How can they hear until a preacher is sent? And how can they preach except they be sent? Listen, the real preaching that gets into people is not the one from the flesh. It's the one that stems out from the spiritual place. And then when they hear, they believe. And when they believe, they are delivered. So what are we looking for? In the course of this conference, hear me very carefully. I want you to be decisive about yourself. I want you to be made up in your mind. Let me check my time. Can I say it the way I want to say it? In that same meeting, on the Saturday, this happened in the afternoon. The woman with the stage four cancer. Then in the night, it rained. So the meeting started late. And I was closing the meeting somewhere about after 10 in the night. Then, while I'm, while I'm trying to close the meeting, I'm saying to them, okay, tomorrow morning service is at this time. Make sure you invite your friends. Whereas I am doing it, a woman starts to cry on my left. And you know they speak French there. And she was crying and speaking in French, so I didn't understand what she was saying in French. So I had to call my interpreter and ask the, the interpreter, what is she saying? Then the interpreter said to me, this is what she's saying. Help me! My baby cannot see. cannot see the way she cried you know the woman with the issue of blood she interrupted the service for everything she was like don't close the service my baby cannot see so I said where is the child and they bring the child the child has never seen this child must be over like two years the child has never seen in his life, he has never spoken a word. And the woman disrupted the service. And I said, bring the child. And they bring the child. While they are bringing the child, I hear God say to tell them, I said, I'm going to pray for this child right now. But the eyes will not open right now, right here. But the eyes will open and the child will speak. And so I asked them to get me the oil. I prayed over the oil and I anointed the child's eyes and then I handed the child over back to the mother. I was at the Lagos airport here in Ruth Johannesburg a week later. The pastor calls to tell me the eyes have opened and the child can speak. That same spirit. That same spirit spirit is not entertainment there is a purpose for that spirit coming into your life don't pile it like knowledge let knowledge become power 
the knowledge of the Son of God and allow that same spirit to have full expression. We teach in the course of this conference. But sometimes you have to say some things to grasp the magnitude of what is in you. Because sometimes, how many of you have, have been a fool before? Anybody been a fool before? You did something out of foolishness, you know. I don't know what I told you about my own here. The first time I was blessed with, the Lord began to bless my life. Somebody blessed me with a bottle of something. And it was Nivea. And so when I used it, and the sun was up, my body became sticky. But I love the fragrance. So I said, okay, I'm going to bake better tomorrow, and I'm going to clean myself up. The next day, I applied the stuff again. Um, everything was sticky when the sun was up. So and I'm like, wait a minute. Why is this gift sticky? I then looked closely. It was an aftershave. Exactly. Now, now, so tell us about yours. <laughs> now I told you about mine, you tell me yours. That's what ignorance can do. You, you know, you have stuff, but you don't know the full weight of what you have. You know, a wife can be so nice that a husband can take her for granted. Yes, and, and a husband can be so nice that the wife takes... You know, you take things for granted. The same things that the people of the world are loafing and wishing. The, Jesus Christ said that, that what prophets of all desire to see, but do not see them. They wish to see them. They wish to experience them, but now it's playing out in your very eyes. Prophets desire to see the times we are in. They look forward towards it. They hope for it, but they didn't get it. It's now playing out right in our eyes and our time. That same spirit. So Paul says that my speech and my preaching, or rather my lifestyle was not with what? Enticing words of men's wisdom. But the demonstration of the power and of the spirit. This is where we are headed. At the end of this conference, that you will be endowed. And what is in you that is a potent force gets motion to produce undeniable results in your life. It would take God to survive the times we are in. Oh, I tell you that. It will take God. The Bible said the people that do know their God, they shall be strong and they will do exploits. It will take something out of the ordinary. The times, the tougher the times are, the greater the platform for you to demonstrate the power and the working of God's great spirit. I never forget one time I was in the bank and I was talking. I went to do some transactions and then the manager was there, was in his office. And then I was listening to him. He had a situation in the office. I'm not a banker. I didn't read finance. I read estate. But as he was talking, it was like he had a crisis in his hand. And I, I just listened to him, everything. And then uh, I listened to how he was trying to get around it. So when he was done talking, I said, can I chip in a word? He said, yes. And the guy is a Muslim. And from the repository, out of your belly, I gave him my counsel. Are you listening to me? It was not science. It's spirit. And when I gave him that counsel, he put the counsel to use, and the counsel brought him an instant result. The man was in church at my next birthday. I said he wants to testify that this church, they speak truth. And he's a Muslim. Listen. There is... A river on your inside, which is going to be my next installment. I'm going to go there. But I just came here to, uh, to whet your appetite for the greater things God intends to do in this place. Because when I was coming here, God said to me, there are two significant persons in this church whose life is tied to this conference. Whose life? Listen, and it, it, when God wants to encounter you, 
Listen, everything is going to look like normal. Are you hearing me? The day that God will visit your life, the sun will not rise from the west. It's the same if you rise from the east, the same 24 hours, the same watches, the same everything. Your house address will not change. But before the day is over, God will have accomplished what he intends to do in your life. Let's look at that scripture quite closely. Oops. Okay. What did Paul say to us? Let's go back to that Romans chapter 8. It says, there is now therefore no condemnation. I just want to read through that, my time. To them which are in Christ Jesus. So the first thing here is what? To be in Christ. How many of you are in Christ? Your pastor will have taught you that many times. To those who are in Christ Jesus. Who now walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. That means they have an operational manual. And hear me, child of God, there are those that walk in the flesh. You have to accept that. And so you are, every waking day, you have to decide, am I going to walk by the flesh or am I going to walk by the spirit? Then he says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and of death. Meaning, there are operational laws. Now, now let, let me put it this way. For example, the law of gravity. The law of gravity. Is a law and is binding whether you are a believer or you are an unbeliever. And we are told that the world is what? Spherical. And why is it that we are not falling off? Because of gravitational earth pool that holds it together. It's a law you cannot deny. That's one. Now he says for the law of the spirit of life. There is a law of the spirit of life. And he says it's where in Christ Jesus. So there is the, the, the spirit of Christ is a life-giving spirit. You cannot be dead when the spirit of Christ, he comes to awaken you from your inside. Because when God said to Adam, in the day you eat of this fruit, you shall die. What he meant was not a natural death, was spiritual death. Because when Adam ate the fruit, he was going about the garden. The only thing he noticed was that he was just naked. But what he did not get was the fact when the Lord God said, in the day you eat you shall die, he thought it was a natural thing. So the enemy beguiled Eve and beguiled Adam and dragged them from the spiritual realm to discuss from a natural standpoint. And so when he died, what died was not a physical body. What died was a spirit. And so when Christ comes, uh, he activates or awakens what was dead. So for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin of death. I, I move around a bit. I move around a bit. And what I find out is every system has its laws. And if you want to be at peace, Follow the law that is operational. Now, when I go to America sometimes, you go to this state, they say that in this state, this is not against the law. You go to this state, they say that is allowed. Then they said in this state, so they have federal laws, but they equally have state laws. And, 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 and you need to know the, the laws that operate in that state. Am I saying something? Likewise, let me bring it home in this church. Now, this is a redeemed Christian church of God, correct? But it's called what? The shelter, right? Is that the only church? No. One of the things you will find out, yes, we have a spiritual cover. But at the same time, to discharge your calling and your purpose, there are certain laws. And if you want to enjoy this environment and enjoy the fellowship here and enjoy the anointing of God, just operate the law that operates here. Let me take you to your house. In your house, there are laws. And if anybody will live in your house and enjoy the house to the fullest, he has to find out what the law is and then operate the laws. So he says, for the law of the spirit of life, there is the law of the spirit of life. There is a law of the spirit of life. So you have to know how that law operates uh, and then how, what that law is and then how to operate in it. And then on the other side, 
He says, for the law of the spirit of life has made me free from, this, from the law of sin. And listen, when you make your choice to live by the flesh, there is a law that governs that. At the same time, there is a law that governs those that want to walk by the spirit. For the law, for what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh. The, the, that other life that is not by the spirit of God is not, I don't know what to call it. It doesn't profit. Let me stay here so that, okay. The law of the spirit of life. This is a life-giving spirit. You remember what I said in the morning. Jesus Christ was rebuking the disciples who were trying to call down fire on a, Samaritan, on a, a, city, a village in Samaria. And he says, you don't know what manner of what spirit you are of. He says, for the son of man came to what? To seek and to save that which was lost. Because when you don't understand that you can use that same power, that same spirit for the wrong things. Pirelli has his axiom, power without control is nothing. Yes, it's power. But you have to know how it operates. So it doesn't, if I, if I put a gun in somebody's hand now and doesn't know how to operate the gun, he's going to hurt himself and hurt other people. And there are people in the kingdom of God that have to be instructed in the law of the kingdom. Instructed in the way of the spirit so you know how to operate and get the best out of it. And there's a way it operates and there's a way it doesn't. He said, what the law could not do, God sending his own son in the likeness of the flesh, condemned sin in the flesh. I'm just grateful to God. One of the things I learned when I was passing with the redeemed church, they always make you, uh, when you come for meetings, they first say, pray and thank God for your salvation. And you know, it sometimes it sounded like a cliche. Like, are you, are you just saying it? Listen. The basis of everything in the kingdom of God starts from there. That is the foundation. And when you take out that foundation, the entire building cannot stand. Hear me. What are we getting at? In this conference. That the same spirit, so by what he's saying to us, it is that same spirit. He has different manifestations with each epoch, dispensation, and era. But that spirit has always been here because the Bible said the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. When God breathed into man, he didn't take it back. God does not give and take back. Are you hearing what I'm trying to say? And therefore, you would find in every era, generation of people, you find that same expression to a certain degree. But on the coming of Christ is a complete restoration. And why? Listen, they didn't give you this spirit. I don't know how to put it to you. It's not for anything to just do guy. No, that's not what it's about. It's to demonstrate what is on your inside. And you see, we can be very unassuming on the outside until you touch that button. Then you're going to know something. I, I trust God in the course of this conference is going to have some time to pray and make some declarations and allow that same spirit do what only he can do. I'm a beneficiary of what God can do. I'm, I'm a testimony, a living proof that that same spirit works. And what in the best, let me just stay here so I don't get you off. I have a lot to say. The, spirit, the, the, the law of the spirit of life. The law of the spirit of life. I'll give you two stories and I'm out of your way. Several years ago, I was, my, my, my pastor then, at that time, was, was invited to go and preach a full gospel meeting in Idimili South, I can't forget, in Onicha area. And uh, when I get there on the first night, there was this gentleman that had a spirit of insanity and... and and he's been harassing everybody around the place. So uh, he had performed some things in the, 
in, in, in the area on the first night, on the second night. And he comes for prayer. And all I said to him, I said, this same verse of scripture, I simply said, for the spirit of life, for the law of it, it's a law. <laughs> Do you know how a law works? It doesn't have regard for faith. Are you hearing? Once you meet it, you've met it. It's a law. There is no, for example, when you get a visa to travel, they don't they check your face, they check the visa. Are you hearing? It doesn't matter what the man at the custom says. You have it. You have fulfilled the law. And he must. So there is a law of the spirit of life. And so when you understand how that law operates, you can operate it. And so when the man came forward, and I, I simply said, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, by that same spirit, I command you to be free. The man was tilted at like 45 degrees. And the power of God dragged the man and cut through the crowd and made a path. And he screamed at the other end. When he got up, he was completely free. The whole area knew there was a meeting there. You see, when you teach, allow that spirit to show itself. We are not just going to load you with knowledge, which we can, yes, but of what use is that power when you cannot deploy it to your advantage? Everything around your life can move. Everything around your life can change. Your space can be improved by that same spirit. So it's not just that you are saved. That's where it stops. No. It's empowerment. He said, wait until you be endued with power from on high. And when that endowment comes, the very things that looked impossible now become very possible. I can go on and on and on. But first, you have to know the law. Now, now when somebody studies law in another country, when you come here, you must go to the Nigerian bar. Right? What do you call it? The law school. What do you do? You acclimatize to the laws here. What you read is true, but it's not applicable here. You have to now understudy what operates here. And so you can practice here. You can't read law in Nigeria and practice in Ghana. Ghana has their laws. So you must, if you go to Ghana, even though you are a trained lawyer, you have to now understudy the Ghanaian laws to know how to operate it, even though you have the knowledge. Praise the name of the Lord. And that's why we're here for this weekend. How does this law operate? There's a law that governs this sound engineering. There's a law that governs how the television operates. There's a law that governs how the air conditioning operates. There's a law that governs how these lights operate. There's a law that governs how keyboards operate. There are laws. There are laws governing how this microphone works. There are laws. There are laws. As much as there's a law of life and death, there is a law of spirit and life. But what you have received is the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And then the possibilities that come by that is why we are here this weekend. To open your eyes to the possibilities that come by that same spirit. By that same spirit. And that same spirit transcends all faculties of human reasoning. It transcends every aspect of your being. It's not a church spirit. It's the spirit that cuts across all human strata. And the intention of God is that he affects you positively in every area of your existence. It's not just about church. It's not just about church. It can affect you academically, affect you financially, affect you maritally, affect you socially, affect you in every area of life. So you see, you have this stuff, but do you know how to operate it? It is in you, but do you know how to operate it? To what degree you operate it determines the level of knowledge. Now, just that you own a phone does not mean. What's that, your son's name again? Ayobami. You and Ayobami, can you operate the phone the same way? But you went to school. You've been to university. Has he been to university? 
But you take your phone. And how many of you parents, you know when you put a password? You don't know how to remove it. Now it's the same phone. But somebody has devoted more time to the phone. That was able to operate more than you that even owns it. So you can receive the spirit, but if you don't know how to operate it, you underutilize it. It's like having an iPhone, what? What's the highest now? iPhone what? 12, right? And all you do is send text and receive text. Abuse. All you do with an iPhone 12 is to receive call and reply call. Do you need iPhone 12? You need... If, what is the smallest phone, Seth? 3310. That's what you need. It's a waste that I give you an iPhone 12 and all you do, you say you can handle is what? You receive call and make call. You don't send text. You don't do WhatsApp. You are not on Instagram. You are not on Snapchat. You are not on anything. You just wasted the phone. Is that all the phone can do? No. But you cannot operate what you don't understand. So there is a law that governs this system. And is the law of the spirit of life. And therefore there is nothing about this system that does not produce life. The ultimate purpose is produce life. God didn't give the spirit because it just feels like having goosebumps. Let me just know. Is to produce life. And it just like the Bible talks about in the river that comes out from the altar. He said, what, wherever the river cometh, whatever it touches shall live. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. I'm going to stop here. For the spirit, for the law of the spirit of life. Ask God to give you a better understanding how this law operates, how this law works. Is a law, is a law, and He has no regard for nothing. He doesn't have regard for tribe. He doesn't have regard for color. He doesn't have. He doesn't care where you live or whatever it is. Is who understands the law that operates it and gets the right result. And so I want you to pray and ask God, Lord, give me an understanding. I need divine illumination over how the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, how does it operate? Lord, I want you to better my understanding. I want you to better my understanding of the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. The law of the spirit of life. Not, not the sin of death, no. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. The law of the spirit of life sets you free. It liberates you from just any and everything. But you need to understand how the law is and how to operate it so that it can set you free.